I came here in uh, 1985, December 1985, came from the Crumlin Road, with sands on the word of a supergrass. I got 12 years, sands the 12 years, and six years, and six years, it was 24 years old like I but I'm running the 12 years. So I came here in December 85, we were brought in, it was put into H2. It was me and a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, God rest him, he's dead now. Gordy prisoners, that's what they put us first. So they brought us in, in this way here. This is my first time in the, in the blocks. So I didn't know what to expect anyway, but when I seen all this, didn't know what was going on. So they brought us into this circle. And they brought us in to see the governor and then they put us onto the wing. So this was all new to me and I was looking around. It's different, totally different from the Crumlin Road. So we didn't know what to expect where we were getting put. We thought we were getting put on the Republican wing right away, but obviously they didn't do that. It was like a committal wing. So they brought us down here after seeing the governor. So I didn't know what was what. Where we were going, what was going on? We brought us down in this wing. So we were brought down here by the screws, and they put us in. They put the two of us in one cell, cell number two of us. This would have been. What would have been that? This one here, number two, so the two of us put down, so there were three in there and that was it, so me and the mate walked up and said we'll go out and find out what's going on here. So we walked in here, we went into the dining room you call it, the canteen, there was all already prisoners here, so as we were class of Republican prisoners, most of the already prisoners man walked out, there was only a few of them left that were new. We started talking to them, what's the crack, who are you and what are you in for? So we were sitting on the arm, these boys, a couple of boys down the road, and what's the crack, blah, blah, blah. So what we had to do, we had to make a decision that we were Republican Socialist prisoners. We didn't belong in this wing. But nothing against the ordinary crims themselves, like, but we wanted to get put on the Republican wing. So. What we've done, we made a we sat here till it was nearly lock up time. And then we made a decision that we had to do something to get put off the wing, to get off the wing and get on the Republican wings. So we went back to their cell. The screws came and said lock up, so we went back to their cells. So I, I filled the chamber pot full of water. And I was standing in the cell. The screw was standing up there at the, at the grill. So, I'm standing here, I lift the chamber pot, walks out, and I shoot up the screw, hey boy. And he turned around, and I threw the chamber pot of water up the middle of the cells there, on the floor. The screw him down, all down. He puts you on, uh, what do I call it? He puts you on a charge. So he locked us up, and he says the two years on a charge. That's all right, get us off this wing. So we're locked up that night. So the next morning, we are brought up in front of the governor and uh, they explained to him, say, we're, we're Republican, social Republican prisoners, we don't belong in this wing, we want put on a Republican wing. So after that, I talked to the governor, we were locked up again and then about an hour later, we took off this wing, or this block, and brought the H5, it was. So they put us on the Republican wing. The shot, what they actually shot it on was put on, on a punishment wing, but there was so many of us was uh, doing the same thing. There was, I think it was 25 of us was brought up the supergrass. So there was too many to be put on a, on a punishment wing. So they had to put us straight on the Republican wing. So we didn't get put on the, on the punishment wings. So when we went on the Republican wing, the brothers, it was t over the lock up at two o'clock. I think it was, no, it wasn't two, it was about half twelve, but apparently all the prisoners were locked up. It was over the break, so they brought me and the mate. 
one of the Republican wings. One of the Republican wings were brought down and they put me in cell. I think it was 14, I think it was. So what about no, it might have been, but, 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 but in the middle, say it was cell, cell 10 maybe. But the, so they locked me up, and they locked the mate up. But none of the rest of the prisoners, they were all locked up, didn't know who we were. But they were all shouting out through the doors, who you is, who you is. So I'm shouting, I'm shouting my name. You might see me, Bala Murphy. Who you are, and I have, you hear people saying, I'm Bala Murphy, who you are, blah, 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 what about you, and all what he's in for, and all this. But we tell them we're up. We got sentenced the day before we brought up. So I was talking, I was standing behind the door. But then, two o'clock, the screws came around to let you out. So at two o'clock, the screws came around and we're opening all the doors. And it was this fella from Bala Murphy, JD, you called him. And uh, he was shooting down. But anyway, when the screw came down, he opened the door. I was standing at the door. The door opened. This fella that I knew from Bala Murphy himself, he was standing there. When the screw opened the door, he was standing beside the screw and he started laughing. And <laughs> I says, what are you laughing for? He says, well, your voice, he says, I told you were six foot tall. He says, when you opened the door, you were really off fucking say. So he started laughing, you know, to get out of the And then she had them to the Republican wing. Brought down. We were brought, brought out to the yard. So the yard's down here. So the reason we got brought out to the yard was that you were getting I.O.'d, is the call that... So that they do is they bring you around talk to you about Castle Ray, about what you were sentenced for, who you were, what you were, what you were in for, and more or less sussing you out, making sure you're 100%. So this went on for... Walk around the yard, there was two, two Republican prisoners walking around with me and two Republican prisoners walking around with the army. It was probably like separate as... But to call it I own, to call you, no I own you. Doing intelligence only to find out if you're on genuine 100% who you are and what you are, find out who you are. And they're getting, they're getting their information. Make sure you're sound, you know. So we walk around the yard anyway, and that was us. And I see it under the Republican wing. Now, as you can see, like this isn't isn't too too big, like. But uh, this is where we had to go out. This is where you're on your walk and you're running, you're playing your football. So what was it? And when the time I came in, it was just after the the big break, the big prison break. So everything was shut down. We I never got out the any access. What do you call it? Over the football pitches. I never got to the gym. Everything that I had to do was done in this block, in this yard. You never got any further than it. Never went anywhere else. There was nothing to, nothing really to do. Only everything was done here, or in the blocks. And that was it. Now football, we used to play football. I hated football. But one day I was out here, we're all playing. We're torturing me to come out and play football. And uh, I said, I don't like playing football. I don't want to play football. It says we're short one man, so I said, it's all right. Blah blah blah. So I was out. This was a couple of months. after a couple of months I was in here. And I said, I'll do nets. So I was doing nets anyway. So I started doing nets. I was starting there. The, the net, you can see it there, look. Here. I'm starting here doing nets. The man comes up with a ball, ball up. So I tried to stop with my hands. But my hand went back like that. I heard a big crack out of it. I think I'm like, I my fucking hands broke. You know, my arm, my wrist. Somebody else said to me, oh, I heard that, heard the crack too. So I goes in, 
It's only a story, like, but I was in, sees the doctor. I says, I want to see the doctor. And the doctor says, what's wrong with me? I said, I think I broke my wrist. So he checked it out. He says, no, I don't think it's broke. I said, it is broke. He may have heard a crack. He says, well, I don't think it's broke. He says, well, I'll take you down to the hospital and we'll check it out. So they took me down to the hospital wing and uh, done an x-ray. And it was broke. So what was, uh, I think that was about four weeks before I got out. So I was on about after that, I was on about with a plaster part of something. Look at when I got released, I still had it on. But this, during the summer here, out here was great in the summer. This is where you done all your social, socialising. We had all our meetings and if you wanted to learn anything, we'd come out the, out the yard, you know. That's yes, about in the yard. I'd come out in the morning and run. But if even if it was raining or snowing, out here, there was always one man who had to come out. It was actually it always kept the, the access open in case it was ever needed. You know, it was always somebody was nominated to come out. There was a rain, hail, or snow. It was to keep the yard open in case it was ever needed for something. In case anything was going to be happening or going to happen or anything. You know, it was never, it was never every day it was open. There was one day I remember, it wasn't December, I think it was about January, heavy snowfall. Me and one of my mates come out of black. Well, he loved to walk out in the rain and the snow and all this. So I said, I'll go out with you one day. And uh, the screw was standing there. The screw's here, did you see? They used to stand there. They had a stand in the rain in the ring. So the place was covered in snow. And uh, we made a big slide. And the snow from one end of the hour, one get to the hour. It was a big slide. The two of us made it. And we're sliding up and down. And all the boys were all. Along on one day, all laughing, squealing, and shouting. We were sliding up and down. Crack was great, you know. It's just one of them things, you just get your day in, you know. <laughs> so that was it. But that door was all closed down there. You could see the old black, but the old yard down there from the old black, but you could never see that. You could never talk to anybody in the old side. You could shout over them, but you could never see them. That was all closed off. You couldn't see out. There was only one. One black, it was hit seven I was on. It was the only black you could look, look over and see the mountain. And that was the only the only black when I was on nerves. They could hear the trains going past and you, know, you just had to use your own manage imagination sort of thing. But that's like about recreational. Yeah, that's all we had, like. It was our football running or throwing a water about or something, back in the ballings. But that was more or less it, just just speak them out and done your own thing, you know. Well, that's it. Out here. It was the same thing, no matter where you went, no matter what you done around here, it was always a screw sitting watching. So you had to watch what you were saying or what you were doing or everything else, you know. I remember the first time I came up here I was asked by the Jack and Falcha, they asked me to want to come up. They were doing a, like a tour around the blocks. They said to me, Jimmy, do you want your name down? I said, well, go ahead, I'll go up. It was about, I think it was about six of us came up. And the first time I walked into the blocks, it just looked 10 times smaller than what it, what it was when I was here before. And it just kind of made me, looking at it, it made me physically sick. Oh, it didn't throw up or anything, but it just, just felt sick inside as I was, as I was walking around the place, walking through the blocks, walking around the yard. I just didn't like it at all. It just brought back too many bad memories, you know. I just didn't like it at all. Just some of the other guys were all right, having a bit of crack and all, but I was just, we you know, it's, this isn't me. It just it wasn't, just didn't like it at all. Didn't like it. It's nothing, it's nothing to be proud of or anything, but the being in here, but the memories that come flooding back when I walked in, it was just, so it just turned white. And when I got home, I told my wife, I was still, still sick, you know, felt sick, sick as about it. I just, done, I done absolutely nothing for me at all, you know.
This is the wing we were probably going to, after the, the initial break, the big break, they closed everything down. So you, we weren't, when I was here, we, you weren't never allowed out of this. You just lived in this wing. You never get out. The only time you get out there was to go to the chapel, into the wee recreation room. But this is where this is where I lived the whole time I was here. One wing, one yard. That was it. You'd no, you'd no woodwork, nothing. You could do paintings in your cell, or so that was about it. Like, but nothing else. But this is this is where I, I had to live. But me and twenty-five more guys was here. But they were all single cells. We were, when I was here, they were never doubled up. You know. But when you come in, this be a love. This was your hard. But. The Republicans never really barred or put anything on the walls. The only thing I had on the wall was a Celtic cross, which I made out of palm. A little bit of palm. That's the only thing I had. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even put a photo up on the wall. I didn't see any sense in it, because it just made you feel homesick and what have you. But uh, your cell, you, clean, you get up in the morning, you made sure everything was clean, tidy, folded up, bumped your cell out, cleaned it. Cap your, you just kept yourself clean as you could. And in here, see in the summer, in the summertime when, when anything was beating in, see in the mornings when the sun came in, say, six, six five o'clock in the morning would be beating in. But what we used to do was parcel bags, you call them. Nobody you got your, your clothes and it was like a brown bag. So we used to open two of them and tape them together and roll them up. So you set it up there, look, that's before you were allowed curtains. Before we were allowed curtains. We, we used to tape it up there and roll it up. And then at night, you pull it down like a blind. So in the morning, the sun wouldn't come in. There's a sun beat at 5 o'clock in the morning. You wake up, that's you. You're waiting at 8 o'clock to get the doors, held doors open. You know, there's nothing that's worse. But the wee blinds, you used to make wee blinds. And you'd have had your books here. and your, You'd have had all your chocolate. If you had any chocolate or milk, you'd have sat it in here to keep it, keep it cool, you know. And then, if anything you wanted to dry, you put a cabin on the bars. You any wash you done, put it over the bars there, keep it warm. Or your tea, keep it warm. Wrap it up in a towel, warm water. No, like that. But that there, this here wasn't here when I was here. There's none of that. It's just that there wasn't even here. It's just this, this here, in your table. The wee unit and your chair, that's all you had. Nothing else. It wasn't even uh it wasn't even the mirror. I didn't need one of them. It was here. You know, and this is your buttons here for if you wanted a ring for the screw or turn your lights on and off. Which you couldn't do on the crumb. You weren't allowed light like, once your lights went out that was it. But here you could have turned your light on and off. Which was wasn't bad, you could sit and read when we're time suited to you. But once it once it came at a clock and the doors were locked, that's when you started feeling you were in jail. Once that door gets locked, yeah, that's when you start thinking, anything happens outside, I'm stuck in here, how do I get out? You know, it's things you have to adapt to and try and keep yourself calm. Because I understand some people get I understand people get into jail for the first time. But when that door gets closed, panic sets and you know. But there's these are things you have to live with. You're, once that door's closed, that's when you go into a different world. That's where you have to mentally sit down and read a book, keep yourself calm, think about what you're going to do or do what's going to happen tomorrow. Keep yourself busy. It's, that's when your whole world just disappears once that door closed at 8 o'clock. It didn't open again at 8 o'clock the next morning. So you were stuck in here for 12 hours. You don't say what you could do, how you get out, what ain't happened to you. That was you, you know, it was like a very bad experience, you know. This is a wee tin and then your chamber pot for going to the toilet in, you know. That was it, like, not much. Just just the basics that you had, and like, Republican prisons only had the basics. There's nothing fancy here, nothing. All, all, the only thing you worried about is keeping yourself clean, keeping yourself clean, looking after yourself, educating yourself, any books you had, or sitting doing drawings or writing letters. You know, you a ladder to get, you, you set the ladder here on the chair. You lift your chair like that. And say you're writing a ladder and I have to get taken the next day. You set your chair there, with your ladder on it, and the screw open the door in the mornings. You would lift your ladder. That's the way you go when it's your ladder away. You know? <coughs> so that's 
So let's bore out that thin sail. But the only good thing was about we, we weren't, when I was in the war, we weren't doubled up. You didn't have to double up or anybody, you had a cell of your own, so I think it was more better. You'd, you'd relax more if you have a cell of your own, you know. And I'll take you down to that canteen. This will be a canteen. This will be your. There was no, there was no snooker tables when I was here. The only thing you had was TV. You could sit and watch a TV, where you could play cards, play chess, play checkers. That was it. There's no, uh, no snooker tables when I was here. This would have been your hot plate would have been here. We had, we, we looked after sales, fed ourselves made our own dinners sometimes, you know, but, but this, this is basically your hot plate and all that about all your wising, but every day everybody took different turns of doing the wising up, doing the dishes, cleaning the place, giving out the dinner, and all that sort of thing. But under here, there used to be two iron bars, under here, would have run across here, which we always had. We could take them out any time we needed them. There was any trouble with the screws. But there were bars for holding plates, hot plates. But there was two iron bars there, big long ones. And the screws never knew about them. We, they probably did, but we, we could have, if any trouble had started, we could have just lifted them out if we ever needed them. It was the kind of tools we had, you know. Blah, blah, blah. But uh, this we used to get your films. You got a film once a week. That's what we got. We used to tape a film off the TV. Well, the screws used to fill them a tip, or tip a TV, fill them off the TV. We used to pick it out of the paper. The last no small ones just once. So say it was a five star fill them up. We would say tip that. And then a couple of days later, they would bring a tip in, video tip, which was behind that wall. And we would sit and watch it, watch the film. And then that was when the camp, when we come in here. It means when you got your tuck shop, everything you bought, Sapped your cigarettes. Everything that was needed was written down. So everybody had it. Like a commune is a thing that you, everybody buys all their stuff out of the shop. It all goes into one sale and it gets distributed among the men. Anybody that needs it. You were never, there was never somebody sitting in the cell or 20 Mars bars or everything was put into one cell. So anytime I had a film going, they would brought it out. Everybody got a Mars bar or Kit Kat or whatever they wanted, a packet of crisps. It was, that's when it would really get no good distributed. That was what it was capped for, especially like cases and sort of thing. But your tobacco, you got that. Whatever you had, money you had left, you put it in the commune. You got extra sugar, milk, sweets, anything we needed, tea bags, everything it was needed. So if, I mean, if anybody came onto the wing, they hadn't got nothing. Only somebody got to put straight on the wing, for, say from a crumb. You say, what have you got? What do you need? I need tobacco, I need, uh, I haven't got nothing. So you give them tea berries, you give them tobacco, you give them milk, and anything else you need out of the commune. That's what it was for, sugar, whatever. So that was every week, it was all put in. It was a great, it was a great, great idea, and it worked well too, so it And the screw came onto the wing. I sent them down from the Crumlin Road. But apparently he was involved in beating Republican prisoners and locking them up and putting the punishment on the punishment blacks, or the, what do you call it? Putting them in the, the 24 lockup 
punishment up in the crumb. Blah, blah, blah. But anyway, they sat him down here. He walks onto the wing. And he's standing out there. Well, I was standing scrubbing the dag scrubber, right? This was in uh, H5. So, next thing I see is all the rest of the prisoners running down. They all headed down to him. What are you doing here? What's he doing in this wing? Get him off this wing. And uh, the crowd got round him anyway. I can't remember what the screw's name was, but uh, the crowd got round him. I was here, what was I here? I think I was here about six weeks on this wing. And uh, I hear the commotion. So I thought, I said, what's wrong? There's your man down. McCrum, this screw's hauling out the patents of the Republican prisoners. Right, so I goes out, and he was a crack. He said, well, I'm off this wing. All the prisoners are shooting at him. Get him off the wing. Get the PO round. Get him off the wing. So the next thing we all got around him, so I walks out with a tax scrubber. One of these, and I had it in my hand. And I was starting with a tax scrubber. Like that there. To be one thing happens here, I just want to walk, walk them in the head. You know, so the screwer saw him watching me with a tax scrubber. Everybody's slabbering at your man. So next thing, a PO came around. And we explained to get him off the wing, and he's had to come back on the wings. So, and the fact he got him off the wing, and everything went back to normal, settled down, I got back. So, where was that or not? The next day, I was sitting there, giving him a tea in the canteen. And one of the screws came in and threw a brown bag in. Well, I asked him to do it. He says, Me, Holmes, you're getting shifted. So, that was me, shifted the other wing. They shifted me to hit seven after that. So, but I don't know, what, I think it was over the, over the incident, over the screw. They must have thought I was done, threatening them with a tax scrubber. So it was an hour's story in here as well, you know. But that's what happened to you. Any screws you didn't like, we give them a hard time and get them off the wings. But, but, but there's no hassle around any of the screws. But funny them did give any hassle. The prisoners just got them moved off because when that door's locked, see when that grill's locked here? He's, this grill. You'd have a screw in here, maybe two, there may be one in there, but once that's locked, he's on his own with 25, maybe 28 prisoners. And there's no way he's going to start any trouble or give any hassle because he'd just get, he'd just get killed. That was it. That's why you never got, that's why you never got any hassle with the screws. I've got your, had your mass in chapel, or chapel every Sunday. Yeah, I don't know why you can see it in there, but that's where the screws. This used to see in the canteen. That would have been the door, look. In here. That would have been in there. You can, I don't know why you got a shot at it or not. Very small, too. And this was a circle. This would be, if you were going for a visit, this was the broadie. But every time you went through, you had a gate, you had two gate, three gates up there. But once you go through that gate, it's locked behind you. And then the other one was open, locked behind you. This is the way they operated. Control movement, they call it. That's what it was. So you, you were never, you were never anywhere to do anything. You were always locked, locked behind you, locked behind you. This is a circle, this is where the PO's office was in here. It would have been in there. And that would have been the doctor's office. When you want to see the doctor in the mornings or a crest to see a governor, this is where you would have went, you know? And uh, that more or less it, you know? This is where screws, screws used to be. But the same when you go over a visit, everything's locked. Everything was locked. Then you went out this gate and that was locked behind you. Uh, and then you would have headed on out here. If you visit, <coughs> it's the only thing you look forward to all, all week. Like. Even through this door, there would have, there would have been a, a van waiting on you here. Maybe two or three guys in it. The end of the van, that was your way to your visit. It wasn't bad. That's the, only thing you, that's the only thing you really look forward to through the week. But, uh, that's more or less it. You know, the crack was good. The guys were good. A lot of old memories of them. I'm still a terrible lot of friends. I made, you made people made mad in here. Still friends and still keeping contact and all, you know. Guys from all around the country. 
uh, that's more or less it. That's more or less my life. One wing. That was it. As you say, this is a visit. This we used to come for your visit. Your families were related to anybody who came up to visit you. The screws would have brought you in first. You'd have come in this door. They'd have put you in a box. You'd have been sitting in the box. And your family would have come through, maybe that door there. But then this would be you had your visit. You'd have the screws walking up and down here, each side of this. And, uh, but this is more or less what you just said for your family. But do, do you allow, if you're sitting there, they would allow your wife to come or your kids to come and sit the same side as you. It would have been no problem there. Like. But uh, this were all the messages. If there's any messages to go around any of the blacks. It was Chakaraks, I called them. It was messages went from black to black. Every OC in the blacks are always communicating with each other. So when you, when you went on your visit, You'd always a mouthful of chakra acid to call them as messages written on, on uh, cigarette paper. And say somebody from H4 was sitting here, or there, and you were, you were from H7 or H, and the message had to go to. They'd try and pass the messages about each other, so the communication, you keep communicating where every black knew what was going on where every other black. There was any trouble going on or anything that was happening or anything was going to be done. This is where it was all, all the communication was done here. This was where it was all, all the chakraks were passed from one person to the other. I mean, you were going out here, if you couldn't pass them in here, you, you, when you were getting brought back to your black, you'd maybe pass them about when anybody else was going out. To their wing, you pass them about. You always kept them in your mouth, under your tongue, you know. Screws knew that, but. If they, if they try to take him out of your mouth, you just swallow him. That was the end of the story, like. But, uh, you want this is where you got your visit once, once every week. It's, it's, it's saying, it's the only thing you'd really look forward to. You're sitting with your family, find out how they were, and, or find out who you were. And plus, you met other people. Other people were getting visits from, and their families come up, and you knew them, and you could talk to them, and all, have a bit of crack, you know, you know. This would be a past if you had anything you needed your wife. Brought you up back stuff, this, that, and the other, you'd have passed it. So just over the table, under the table, whatever. But you always had to watch the screws, you see. The screws. That was it. That was it. Just a, more or less, more or less, it was more, more of a communication room than it was a visiting room as well, you know what I mean? This was a, everybody communicated. This was all the messages you passed. Everybody knew what was going on in every wing. This was, all, this was your information. It was actually an information centre. That's the way I would look at it, you know, too, as well as a visit. But uh, then you, you gotta, this way you gotta add your tea, you gotta pay a 10p for a cup of tea, or 10p for a wee glass of orange for the kids, you know. But, uh, but it was an emotional little time, too, when your kids came up to see. It wasn't too bad when your wife came up on their own. You and Horgan adapt to it. Like, when your kids come up, that's when you get emotional. and. You're trying to, you're trying to get a half an hour, and a half an hour with your kids is like trying to get a fucking full day in. You know, you, you don't know what to do and what to say to them, or all you can do is hug them and kiss them, and how you keep them, blah blah blah. You know, but, but when the wife came up, it seemed to be better. You, you seemed to be more relaxed. When the kids came up, it was uh, more of a nightmare for you. You know, seeing them walking, seeing them, especially seeing them walking out the door again. That's when it really. See, when you see a wife, kids walking out that door, you know you do that door. That's a, that's a, the, the part that really tore you apart, you know. Well, that's more or less that thing in the visiting room, you know. But uh, this was it. But, but I would have called it a communication centre, this place, as well as the visiting room, you know. This is where everybody communicated. If you didn't see anybody, maybe, maybe you wouldn't see anybody for two months, 
You go to a visit and you see them, one of your friends. That's the only time you'd see them. Maybe you wouldn't see them for an hour, six months again, you know. But uh, that give you kind of a lift too, you know, seeing how they're keeping a bit of crack. The crack was great in here. The atmosphere was all right, you know, the screws never barred you. Or that was more or less it, you know. So that's it. Like, there's not much more to say about the visiting room, you know. That's it. But as you see, it's very, very small, compact, and not much privacy here, like, to do anything, you know. So that's about it. Well, this is a hospital wing we're heading until now. But this is, I've only ever been in here once. Well, that's when I got my, I was explaining to you when I got my wrist broke. But it's a sad place where the hunger strikers died. So it'll be an emotional tour around here too as well. So I'll bring you in and show you tonight. This is where they brought me when I was explaining to you. Back in the black, sir. When I was playing the football, I got my wrist broke. There's a place I don't like. I just uh, it's very, very emotional. The last time I was, I was up here last year, and they brought me in here, and as I was explaining to you, it was. You can, just, you can feel, it's like a funny feeling you get coming over when you walk into this place. It's sad and emotional and... What way would I put it? It actually makes you feel a bit sick, you know? Because you know what happened in here. Ten guys died in here. For to get, for actually to get me privileges and other prisoners privileges, you know? This is here anyway, it's not much different than the blacks, only these cells are held for patients, you know. This is what brought me in when I was getting my wrist sorted out. There were seats here, long hour, there was a long here probably, where I was sitting. When they brought me in, there was, an hour, there was about half a dozen hour prisoners here. Some of them were overlooking the nerves, or the nerves are breaking down, or something else, or looking medication. But I think it was that in the railway brought, I got the, they brought me around and x-rayed me. Found out my wrist was broke. So I thought they would have took me to one of the hospitals, the major hospitals. They would have taken me outside, take me to the Royal or maybe a city or something to get it done. But the doctor just made the plaster parts up himself and stuck it on, that was it, more or less. So that was me, my left here, I came out, plaster parts on. But, uh, it's a nearly old place too, but it's a place too. Really. I've never really been in this. I've only been in here once. So I can't really say too much about it. We're walking through these places. Terrible. Just think of the, this is where the hunger strikers all died. Where you can see what's happening here and as people's coming to visit these cells now when these, these guys died. And they're starting to take parts of the beds and there's flowers left. We, we meddle. Eat prayers. Yeah. That's it. That's. Uh, I can't do any more in here. Just want to sit out. Just. Uh, sad. Too sad. This place is too sad for me to, to talk about it, you know. Don't. Just want to. But that's. The only time I've ever been on was when I got my, my wrist sorted out, that was it. Like, it's a place I don't like, I don't, just don't like it at all. And I just think that if I feel like this, most of coming in here, 
What does the families feel like? You know, the prisoners' families, the guys that died, what do they feel like? And this is the way I feel like. They're just all coming back again. I was saying to you the last time, it makes you physically sick. They're, they're just coming back again, you know, when they get in there. Just, you just feel like breaking down, but you can't, you know, it's all part of history and it'll go down as history. And I just think it shouldn't have happened, don't I? You know, and I think it shouldn't have happened.